Okay, hello. Uh, I'm Jan Holshevsky, I work for Collabora, and I would like to uh, tell you about the exciting things that we are doing uh, with LibreOffice Online, and that is dialogue paneling. But before I get to that, uh, I will explain you just a bit about the structure of the, uh, the LibreOffice Online, so that like, you have the general overview, what's going on and one, why we are doing this thing. Uh, so basically, uh, the LibreOffice Online has two parts. One is the server part. Uh, which contains the daemon uh, that is responsible for the actual communication with the clients. Uh, it spawns LibreOffice instances uh, so that like uh, each of the document actually has uh, its own LibreOffice instance uh, that is responsible uh, for, uh, for the actual typing in the document. And also uh, like these do uh, the rendering of the document. And also, of course, it um, manages the user's um, interactions with the document, so uh, like passes the user events that come from the client into, uh, into the LibreOffice course so that like it is possible to do something with the document. Of course, like when something is happening in the LibreOffice core, uh, the callbacks have to be routed back, uh, back, to the, uh, back to the clients and do something about that. Uh, this stuff is all in C++. On the other hand, the client part uh, is, uh, we call it uh, low leaflet, uh, because it's based on leaflet, which was originally a software for displaying maps. Uh, so, uh, which, uh, like the maps, uh, uh, for, uh, for example, open street map, uh, maps is using that. And, uh, like, the, the entire map is split into, uh, like, small, uh, small images, like here. This is one of the tiles. Uh, you can see it here and the document is composed from that. So basically, like, even though you are seeing a document that has the text there, uh, it is not a text that would be in the browser. Uh, it is just a set of uh, images that is composed together uh, to do something that looks like, uh, like text. Um, this low flat communicates with, uh, uh, with uh, the server part uh, using WebSocket, and uh, yeah, uh, and but the document itself is not the only thing in there. You can see also, uh, also the toolbar, menu bar, um, status bar, and other things that are in JavaScript. But of course, uh, like it's very, uh, very impractical to, uh, to implement everything or re-implement everything in JavaScript. So we had to search for some right balance between like what has to be in JavaScript and what uh, has to be uh, like done and rendered by the LibreOffice core. Uh, so, like in the early prototypes, uh, like there were no tiles, there were nothing in well, basically nothing uh, in JavaScript. It was just like your uh, pure like invalidate everything, get me back uh, the the entire screen again, and and like basically the entire UI uh, was was in the browser, which was not uh, like where we want to to be, just because like. Uh, um, for every action that you would like to do, you would have to render it on the server, which is very impractical. So then, uh, like, uh, we decided that the TALT approach is good because there's a code that we can reuse. Uh, there were another implementations, for example, on Android, uh, like Mozilla uh, Firefox on Android was, was using these tiles. Um, and, like, uh, lots of other projects in the industry uh, were using the tiles for actually, like, rendering the documents. So we thought it's the right thing to do. Uh, but on top of that, uh, we started, uh, like, uh, uh, painting the overlay with the, with the cursor and with the selections. And uh, just because, like, it was very impractical to send the entire bitmaps when just the cursor moved. So instead, like we we just uh, uh, started sending just the coordinates of the of the cursor, and uh, started rendering that uh, in a layer on top of that. Uh, then next thing uh, that turned out to be like uh, practical uh, to uh, to render uh, in JavaScript uh, was comments and red lines, just because people are used to uh, that the comments have some nice UI, they look pretty, and they can have pictures. Um, they flow next to the cursor, like when, when in, uh, you select the text that, that uh, has the command and stuff like that. So it was good to do uh, in, in JavaScript. But then, what about dialogues? At first, uh, we started uh, re 
maintain some of the dialogues in JavaScript. Uh, for example, to find and replace special character insert table. But like very soon, it turned out that like, like this is no way to go. Uh, it's just too many dialogues out there uh, that's uh, like very impractical, um, takes a long time. There are hundreds of dialogues in, in LibreOffice, and uh, like some of them are like, extremely complex, like uh, the cell character, uh, cell format uh, style, and, and, and these things. Uh, so uh, the plan was to start tunneling the dialogues actually from LibreOffice. Uh, let's reuse the, the dialogues um, uh, as they are and use them uh, in the browser. Actually, um, like the plan was good, um, but the, the thing turned out to be uh, a bit more challenging than it in initially looked like. But luckily, Pranav Kant did all the hard work there, or most of the hard work there, and, uh, and now we have uh, beautiful dialogues inside uh, LibreOffice Online. Um, you can see on the screenshot that uh, that like uh, it has all the tabs, it has uh, like the various uh, various uh, custom uh, uh, custom widgets that uh, that are available in LibreOffice. Um, for example, like uh, seeing the, the line types and everything. Uh, so like because it is rendered in LibreOffice, but routed uh, to the online, you can have all the all the stuff. But there were uh, lots of challenges. Uh, for example, like now, uh, as the resulting thing, you can do it collaboratively. So you can have one, uh, like two users that collaborate on one document, and both of them select the same paragraph, and both of them actually issue the paragraph setting dialog. And one of the users uh, can like shrink the size of the paragraph, and the other can set the background to green. And when both of them uh, like press OK, it just does the thing that you would expect. Like it shrinks the paragraph and does it green, which is awesome. But I think you can imagine that like it was not straightforward. Luckily, uh, the LibreOffice core was very helpful here. Uh, so uh, like the SFX framework, um, surprisingly, uh, like did lots of uh, good stuff for us instead of uh, like you know, making us prob problems, um, so, which was great. Um, we initially did uh, like all the all the uh, like tunneling and uh, and uh, messages about uh, about like what has to be done in the uh, in the core and in dialogue uh, in the SFX. But then, like it turned out that we have to move it down to VCL. So now uh, most of the stuff uh, is done directly in VCL, uh, which is responsible. Uh, for drawing the dialogues or drawing the widgets and, and stuff like that, uh, which we extended so that we have added there the callbacks uh, that notify us about the invalidations, about the dialogue creation, about site changes, and stuff like that. Uh, then for the actual ren thank you. Uh, for, for the actual rendering, uh, we were using uh, the screenshotting feature uh, that was done uh, by our uh, friends at SIP. Uh, then we have added the concept of uh, a lock notifier. Uh, the, uh, the lock notifier uh, is an interface that actually allows us to do uh, stuff in SFX2, even though like, we are in the lower layer, uh, which, uh, which, is the, uh, which is the VCL. It is because like, uh, um, all the, uh, the carrying of the views and uh, and like uh, the collaboration between uh, between people is actually done in SFX, and in SFX we also have the mechanics of actually uh, like notifying uh, the right view uh, through the LibreOffice Kit. Uh, but uh, because like the stuff is uh, happening in VCL, we were we had to had a way how to like skip these le levels, and so this notifier. Um, is uh, is uh, like just a way how to overtake this and like now we are able to do stuff in VCL but then it like the LibreOffice kit is notified in in SFX and yeah so we had to add uh, a bit of API into LibreOffice kit uh, which was uh, uh, which was several methods um, I think they are uh, reasonably obvious. Uh, painting of some area in the dialogue, 
uh, posting some events if, if they are necessary. Uh, so far, only closing of the window is uh, implemented. Nothing else was necessary to be done this way. Uh, then uh, posting of uh, uh, key events, mouse events, like when the user does something in the uh, in the uh, client part, you are able to uh, to route it to to, to the LibreOffice core, and then of course lots and lots of callbacks uh, from the from the VCL back to uh, back to uh, the uh, LibreOffice kit and and to the online. So stuff like create it, uh, title change, size change, invalidate, cursor was moved. Uh, uh, cursor uh, was done visible and, and closing the dialog. So, after all this was done, uh, we thought that we have won, but not yet. Uh, there were additional challenges, so one was uh, language support. Um, the thing is that one document can be shared uh, by multiple users and one of them has, uh, has the UI set in English and the other has that actually in Czech. And what to do? Um, well, as you know, LibreOffice itself, when you change the, lang uh, the language, uh, it actually tells you, well, you cannot uh, change it now. You have to restart LibreOffice. So we had to overtake that. Um, luckily, uh, like uh, Qualon's switch to, uh, to get text uh, helped us uh, tremendously here, uh, just because uh, like the, 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 the infrastructure was, uh, was much more prepared to, to actually switching. Things were cached, so uh, or are cached. Uh, so, like when you switch the language, it is not that all the files would be uh, like reloaded again. Um, it is all uh, all like loaded once and then then just used. So, uh, luckily, in most cases, uh, it was just a, uh, just a matter of uh, changing the static locale uh, into into like getting the locale uh, again. And again, like when the when the the view was switched. Uh, similarly, SFX module uh, had to be adapted uh, very similarly because uh, again the the locale uh, there was uh, uh, was cached, uh, but not using static, but uh, like as part of the uh, as part of the object. Uh, the other uh, challenge here uh, and big one uh, was modal dialogues. Uh, so the thing here is. Uh, that uh, the thing here is that like when you execute a dialog like non-modal dialogues are fine like they can hang in the in the view and and they are all fine but like when you have a modal dialog um, you ex uh, you issue an execute and like at that time like uh, it yields so so like all other st things is still happening. So you can, like, from the other view, issue the dialog again. That's all fine. But still, like, you are hanging in this execute. So, like, there's one execute and another execute, uh, like, happens on top of that. And so now what happens? Like, if this user that is in the lower execute uh, just ends the dialog uh, and, like, once uh, his or her changes actually be visible, like it doesn't happen until like the the guy uh, that is on top of him closes the dialog as well, and the guy like wh who is on top of them can just disappear, and like you would get never, you would never have the the stuff uh, confirmed. So, it was necessary to uh, actually convert uh, this modal dialog to uh, modal async. Uh, this means that like when it, instead of this execute. Um, you do not you do not hang uh, in in that execute instead of you just trigger uh, showing the dialog and uh, create a callback uh, like what should be done when when the uh, when the user actually touches OK and and like LibreOffice had a mechanism for that which was this uh, uh, this start execute model. But it was impractical because it was using the the links, uh, uh, the linking mechanism that is uh, in in LibreOffice, which meant uh, like there would be necessary to do like bigger changes uh, to actually do that. You would have to like move the code uh, into separate uh, into separate uh, uh, separate uh, method or uh, or function, and do and maybe you wouldn't have uh, some of the stuff that you need there available and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, Michael actually changed that uh, or introduced start execute async, 
uh, which gets a lambda and actually change the model, uh, the start execute model into using the start execute async. So now, um, what is normally necessary to be done to convert a dialog from the execute to async execute is that you uh, in, uh, do VC, uh, you create a dialog uh, not a scope VCL pointer but just a normal VCL pointer because the start execute async will then later take care of actually destroying the dialog uh, and instead of executing uh, you do not do the executing instead uh, you move the lamp, uh, move the the code that happens after the execute because like there was probably the, here some code uh, that uh, was taking care of applying the changes and uh, you would just uh, wrap it around uh, this this lambda uh, get the result according to that do the changes of course like in some cases it's more complicated than just this uh, but this is the basic structure here and usual caveat uh, so uh, thanks to doing this all uh, stuff in VCL, uh, most of the dialogs just work out of the box. You just issue the you know command, uh, you know command, and the dialog appears. Uh, it doesn't appear in the situation when it gets null uh, as the parent, uh, because like in that case, it doesn't have set uh, the uh, loc notifier, and like in that case, it is usually just uh, uh, just. Uh, enough uh, to set, uh, set the parent as the window of the view shell. Um, if the dialog doesn't switch the languages for the user, uh, then uh, you have to find a place like where there's some static variable. Anything else? Happy to answer you. Any questions? So, thank you for listening, and thanks also uh, to these guys who has done the work, because I've done only a very small bit of that. So, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, just curious, um, when you sent over the bitmap of the whole dialogue, you, you have a good initialization, but uh, then when, when just a single button changes or something, do you send a diff or the whole dialogue again? No, uh, because we send the invalidate, we know what to render. Okay, so we just render this, this small thing. Yeah. Yes? Sorry? You say two users can open the same dialog in, in the office? Yes. And they get paid individually? Yes. In ah. different languages as well. Okay. But my question is um, uh, you explained that <coughs> uh, you're able to tunnel the, just like a screenshot, the whole dialog, and, and it's re um, rendered on the, on the client side. But how is it handled, the uh, interaction? I mean, for example, if a uh, combo box is pushed and so. The combo list has to open. Yes. Uh, it is how is it handled? It is always a mechanism of or rendering, let's say, um, getting the click and sending to the, to the daemon server. Yes. And yes. It, yes. And back. So it, it has to be done this way. Just like the VMC, let's say. Yes. Yes. In that case. Yes. Uh, who is next? Please prepare uh, here. Uh, let's, let's, yeah. Mogi. <laughs> you mentioned that, that you allow modal dialogues, but is the other uh, user still allowed to change the document? Yes. Well, because I, I know a lot of places in the office that we crash left and right, we, we use modal dialogues because you should not be allowed to change the document uh, while the dialogue is open. I was, yeah, so I was surprised as well how well it works. <laughs> <laughs>